Well, I don't know if I should really be enjoying these great temperatures and this perfect gardening weather or be a little scared by it. So I guess I'll just do both. <laughs> Uh, because there is gardening that we can do even though it is December. So today I am planting the balance of my bulbs, particularly my alliums. I am going to show a few tips and tricks that you might want to attend to while you are down on your hands and knees and also sow some seeds and kind of my decision making process on where those seeds go. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Now, some of you are probably going to ask, is it too late to plant bulbs? No, it's not too late to plant bulbs. Actually, I have planted them even up until the 1st of January. As long as the ground isn't frozen and is soft and friable and you can dig into it, then you can still plant your bulbs. And even if it's beyond that window of time, I encourage you to go ahead and plant them anyway because Otherwise, they're just gonna sit in your garage and they're gonna rot, and you can't really over-season them and plant them the next fall. So I've gotten all, I say I, I had a lot of helpers who got all of the tulips in the ground, but I hadn't decided where I wanted to place my alliums. So today is allium planting day. Now I have found that, found that the, the best, the two most crucial things about planting alliums are number one, picking out really good quality bulbs. And by that, you guys know the drill. They are firm, there's no soft spots. They're um, of a good size so that you know that the bloom will be commensurate with the size of the bulb. And I typically always get my Allium bulbs from Color Blends. These are Ambassador that I'm planting right here. And Stuart, maybe we should put up a bloom. Do that. Are, there, are there anything people should look out for that well, if they're just squishy, if they've been sitting in an area um, at a retailer maybe that doesn't look like they really are taking care of their bulbs. But typically, again, I buy them from an online source and that's never been a problem. The second thing I think we really want to keep in mind is that they need excellent drainage. Because unlike tulips, which I plant every year, alliums, I really want them to perennialize and come back and increase in size each year. So because of that, I want to ensure that the bulb does not rot. And for me, that means a big old dose of gravel at the outset. Now these, like any bulbs, are gonna be planted about two and a half times the depth of the bulb. You can go a little bit shallower. And you can see here, that even though this is pretty good quality of soil, it's nevertheless got a substantial amount of clay in it. That's my default here in my cottage garden. So that is one of the reasons that I want to put a pretty copious amount of gravel at the bottom. So then I'm just going to take the bulb and sometimes I'll put one in a hole, sometimes I'll put two, but I just put it with the root side down, just nestle it into the gravel, and then I just backfill. And I'm trying to get these in because, Stuart, I think we're going to get some rain tomorrow. It's either tomorrow, is it tomorrow? Maybe right. sat. no, it might be Saturday. We have uh, like an 85% chance of rain. And if we do, that will be a wonderful thing. Now you may ask, how do I decide where I want to place them? Well, I know that in the spring, I'm gonna be cutting back the candy butterfly pretty drastically because I want to reduce their size. I want them to grow very full and lush. And I also, want them to, I, and because they, they will look kind of ratty and tatty, and I, I will want to clean them up. So I will cut them back hard, and what that means then is they will no longer be in the foreground of these alliums, and you'll be able to see the alliums really, really well. The other thing is the alliums are going to bloom about just about when the tulips begin to finish. And so this will give me a more bulb display and a longer continuum of bulb bloom, even though they are not tulips, 
well into the spring. So that's what I'm doing today. I also know that they will be in bloom just as the white wedding hydrangeas are starting to come out. And so in other words, there's not gonna be a whole lot of other things going on. However, what I do like about it is that the the foliage will be obscured then by all of the surrounding shrubs as it needs to die back for it to perennialize. So I'll just have, I'll just have the blooms. Now something else that when I'm doing this kind of job, I try to have with me, if I can find it, is some kind of weeder. This is one of these, I don't know what else to call it really, but maybe a soil scraper. I got this one years ago from Bridgetown and it is perfect for getting rid of weeds. And for me, that would primarily be things at this point in time, like clover, like henbit, and even, even like this dandelion. I can injure it enough. Yeah, it, it's kind of an off with your head kind of thing. It's very, very gratifying. And I can just leave it, I can just leave it in place. Oh look, here, found a grub. I'm gonna throw that out onto the sidewalk for the birds. A little Christmas treat for the birds. It's also really good for breaking up these kind of dirt clods. Okay. And like I say, it's very, very satisfying. So I'm gonna put a drift of about five of these in this area in a rickety rackety way. And I think it'll be really, really fun and whimsical for these to be blooming in the cottage garden. Now, one thing on my Christmas list, because somehow with all of the different people working here this year, I lost my small headed shovel, what I think of as a perennial shovel. And I'm working with this big one, which I don't like nearly as much. So I'm putting that on my Christmas list. I didn't know that happened. That's why you got that response from me. What's that? I didn't know you lost your shovel. Oh, I lose stuff all the time. <laughs> I lose stuff all of the time. Now over here on this side, and I don't mind, you know, mixing them up. And on this side, I'm probably going to, I'm mixing up uh, man, stipitatum, stipitatum. These are lilac pink. I, I have no idea. I'm sure the the pronunciation police will come after me on that yeah, one. I'm not sure. If you know, that's my question of the day. Let me know how to pronounce that. <laughs> and then I'm also going to be uh, planting some globe master. And these, again, I'm planting them betwixt and between things that are going to be cut back over here, more buddleia, but also some of the salvias and things, and even some of the agapanthus, which I am hoping will also come back. This is indigo frost. And it will only benefit from good drainage. So it will like, I'm gonna have to replenish my gravel, Stuart. Um, it will, it will only like the additional drainage that that gravel provides. I should have opened this before. Now these, I've told you about this before, you guys, these mesh bags, they make great produce bags for when you go to farmer's market or and so I'm gonna plant a couple of them. Now, some of you may wonder if they're locked off at the side, is that something to worry about? Will they not grow? Indeed, they will grow. And that's kind of how they get more bulbs because they kind of divide them. I'm no bulb expert, but in these, because they're a little bit smaller, I'm putting more than one in the hole. And notice I'm also mixing in some of the leaf litter when I backfill to improve the quality of the soil. It was the first time I almost dropped the phone. Don't. All the time you shot. Okay, don't drop, <laughs> don't <laughs> drop the it phone. It was gonna happen one day. Don't drop the baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I get the dropsies all the time. Okay, so I'm just breaking up this soil and it's moist because I've had to, I haven't kept it on every day, but sporadically on manual, I come out here and I put 
the sprinkler on because it's been dry because it's just been dry and the rest of this I'll break down and I said two and a half times the depth of, of the bulb but that's about six to eight inches so there's some more. I'm going to finish up the rest of these, you guys. And then maybe you'll come back with me <clears throat> as I scatter some seeds. Well, Stuart just called this Lessons with Linda because I thought of something that I wanted to share with you. And we've probably heard, and typically we hear about this more in late winter as we're really anxious to get out there before spring and start doing some yard work, but it's equally as true this time of year. So while planting these alliums in the other areas of the garden, the soil was moist, but it was very friable and it wasn't overly wet. Well, in this area, look here. I'm trying to break up these clods of clay and they're just staying in clods. And that's an example of not working with the soil when it's too wet because this area apparently holds water a little bit more greatly, which surprises me because it's on a slope. But you ruin the tilth of the soil. And what do I mean by the tilth of the soil? Well, it's no longer broken up into friable little bits like that but it comes out in clumps, which are almost impossible to break up. And those clumps will remain until I come back out and do something about them. So that's one of the reasons that we don't want to really work, overwork the soil when it's wet outside. And can we just take a moment to, uh, uh, to appreciate the beauty of this kaleidoscope abelia? I mean, look at how gorgeous those flowers are. And this is December. Now we haven't had a lot of freezes, but we've had a couple and look how beautiful it is. In fact, I think it's more beautiful now than it was this summer it's in, so cool, in August. Cool. Yes, and here's one that I've allowed to get a little bit bigger, but look over here, this one, I clipped it back more tightly so it's almost as a ground cover. So this is one of those great shrubs that you could use as a ground cover. And pretty soon we're gonna do something really fun. We're going to do a riff on um, the 12 days of Christmas, but it's going to be 12 days of Southern Living Plants, and it's gonna be really fun, I think. So we're gonna be working on that next week, so stay tuned. I'm also looking over here at all the other plants they have just done so, so well, despite the heat. Picking up a little bit of trash. But all of this debris that's in here, I'm keeping in here because I want it to mulch these plants and break down and improve the, the uh, quality and the tilth of the soil. So I need to take some of those leaves and throw them over there, I guess. Okay, so on to the next chore. Okay, don't forget, a great stocking stuffer idea for gardeners or even non-gardeners, people who just like to work out in their garage or whatever, are really good winterproof gloves for winter, for the garden, for cold weather gardening and cool jobs. Nobody does it better than cool jobs. You guys know I'm a real fan of them and they're also especially good for women who need a manicure and need to cover up their fingernails. <laughs> So I've waited for all of the tulips and now the bulbs, including the alliums, to be in the ground because I'm going to scatter some seeds. And the seeds that I'm going to scatter are uh, just of great variety. Here is my box of them. And as I scatter some of them, I'll describe them. But first, let's talk a little bit about seed recognition, which is a skill that you really want to hone as as you garden more and more. It's something that I am still doing after all of these years because every year I try a new kind of seed. But I wanna see first of all, what is already in place that I have scattered before. And even though none of it bloomed this year, I remember scattering lots of larks per seed, particularly along Lemon Lane. So I wanna see if any of it has germinated because that will help me assess how much more I want to plant. But as I'm doing it, I'm also going to be taking my handy dandy weed scraper and I'm going to identify weeds that I can slough off. 
because even in the winter, this is a fun thing to do when it's not too cold on a beautiful day to get out when you just have got to get out in the garden, when your soul demands it. So here, these are weeds, and I'm just gonna scrape those off. And I'm gonna look, there's some henbit under there. There's some more over there. Here's a baby dandelion I think I can get. So definitely there are some weeds in here that I can get when they're young before they create a problem and before they ruin my spring show. Okay, so I'm just, I'm gonna do that. But now I'm cheating a little bit because I did identify some larkspur seed in this area earlier. And here is a patch of it right here. So, it's very ferny, it's very delicate. I can identify in this little patch what's a weed and what's not, and I can scrape off anything that is not a larkspur, but obviously a lot of times when the seed falls, it kind of falls in a clump. Now, am I going to thin this seed? No, probably not. Some of this, I, I just like it to fall where it goes, lands, if it comes up too thickly, uh, so be it. After it's a little bit taller, if I want to thin it out, I can just by cutting it back. But I spy something else here. So in addition to the larkspur look, I see a little golden fever few. And I remember, <laughs> I know, <laughs> uh, just a little indeed. But you see, it's got its characteristic, its telltale gold color. I have a question. Mm -hmm. It may not have anything to do with your current topic. What are, are those onions over there coming up? What is that coming up? No, from? those are probably some kind of bulb from the prior owner. Oh, okay, cool. And I don't, I don't exactly know what they are. That's what I was curious about. Um, I'm going to come over here. I still see some more things. But what this tells me is, yes, indeed, some of the larkspur did germinate, but not a lot of it. And so I'm gonna to want to scatter more of the larkspur seed in this area along Lemon Lane. Why? Because how beautiful will that bluish purple look with this chartreuse color from not only the golden fever few of which I'm going to plant more, but as I've mentioned before, and by the way, this is the golden fever few. This is how big it will get and how beautiful it will get. <laughs> yeah. So isn't that beautiful? It's like a, it's like a light bulb. In yeah, the it's, it's like a little fern. It looks like a little fern. There, look, there's another one tucked back in there. And all of this came up from seed that I scattered earlier. Now, in the spring, I can also go back, and if I see any seedlings that aren't in the place that I want them, I can just transplant them. I can move them around. But I started to say that the lemony in Lemon Lane is all from Miss Lemon Abelia and the Lemon Lime Nandina, and I just love the way it looks. In addition to the golden fever few, and some other things that I'll be planting along in here. But when that larkspur blooms, won't it be beautiful because it will bloom in just about the same color as these pansies and violas? And that'll be spectacular, great color echoes. I see a weed over here. It's, like I say, it is so gratifying, you guys, to do this, just so gratifying. One of the fine ones. Especially, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I'm looking for them. I see over here, look, I see some more larkspur. So there's a lot of it over in here. And what I'll do is then I won't sprinkle it where I already see it. I'll sprinkle it in areas where I don't see it. Here's a big batch of weeds over here. I am just itching to get to. So look here. There's a larkspur with its telltale ferny leaves. Okay, okay, look here. Okay. Okay, look. See see those leaves? See my terrible manicure that well, you can't even call it a manicure anymore, but I'm gonna take care of that after I garden today. But see that ferny leaf right there? See how beautiful that is? Here's another larger one. Okay. So which one of these is not like the other? Well obviously this is not. And so now one thing if it's going to rain or whatever, then you might want to actually remove these from the premises 
so they don't take root again. But normally in my experience, it's so dry here that they just dry up and become part of the mulch. Okay, Stuart, let's take a break here and let's move over to another part of the garden and see if I can ID some different types of seedlings. Well, I see all sorts of seedlings over here, some of which later I will probably thin out, but I've got some of that beautiful white Minoan lace. Look, that one even has kind of a bloom on it. It is a more uh, a daintier, well-mannered version of Queen Anne's lace. And the telltale on it is first it puts out these long, I don't know if those would be called the cotyledon leaves, but these long leaves, strappy leaves like this, and then it turns ferny. And then when it grows up, it begins to look like this or this. And it will just really create this billowy white effect through here that'll be beautiful. Over here, however, that is a larkspur. How do I know? Because look at its leaf, its first leaf is stubby versus long like the other one. And that one is more cut leaf, and this one, the striations in it or the cuts in it are a little bit less delicate. So that's, that's how I can identify, and it might be things that you look for. What do the very first two leaves look for as you're identifying different kinds of germinating seeds? And through here, I can see that there's lots of larkspur that's germinated through here. So I'm going to be very, very judicious about where I decide to sprinkle my larkspur because I don't want more of it where it already exists, but I do want more of it where it doesn't exist. That's just how life works. Okay, so let's take a break here and I'll get out my seeds and start doing some sprinkling. Now going through your seed inventory is not only fun to do this time of year, if of course you have time before the holidays, but it's especially fun in January and February because you can go back and it just makes you feel spring and the potential of spring. So I can identify, I don't really have to mark my seeds anymore unless I'm going to gift them because I can identify them. But this for example is the seed head of a Minoan lace and the seeds are very sticky and this is very prickly. So these are fun. They are fun to, uh, to harvest. They're fun to give away. Now these are very, very prized and they smell so fragrant. These have dried. And by the way, yes, should I have a, a, a I don't know, a more systematic way to <laughs> store all my seeds? Yes, but that's something I'll work on next season. Um, but in here, I have all sorts of boxwood basil seeds. So these I am really, I am really, well, let's say I might be a little stingier with my boxwood basil seeds because I don't have as many of those. Um, poppies, I have some poppies and you know about poppies, you can go like this. Most of these have already fallen out of the seed heads. These would make fun. Um, holiday decorations if you wanted to put some of these on a package whether you spray painted them or you just left them the way they are they're just so dear they're just so so appealing so I've got seeds down at the bottom here I'm I'm conflicted about where I should plant my poppies because they can look messy at first they need some protection they need some staking typically um, so you guys let me know if you were me here's my my uh, my big question of the day where should I sprinkle my poppy seeds? Because I can go ahead and do that now too. And I've also told you my technique. Oh yeah, I and, about that. Yes, and that is to take just some kind of big canister, fill it with some kind of very fine dirt or sand, and then put your, your whatever kind of seed it is in there and just shake it up and then you just literally sprinkle it, season your soil <laughs> with different kinds of seeds, exactly with different like kinds of is. seeds. So, uh, so I've got more, I've got more larkspur in here, um, lots of larkspur. I've got seed that other people have gifted me. You guys are so dear and I'm, I, I wish that I, I had the wherewithal to be able to thank each one of you individually for the gifts that you give and especially around Christmas. I've gotten just so many 
sweet, sweet, warm hearted cards and letters and gifts. And I just can't thank you enough. Um, these are, oh, I've got different seeds gifted to me from Carlina Elizabeth. Um, and I don't have to show you all of these. I will re remind you guys that you can, you can order these seed packets if you need some for stocking stuffers, that you can order these seed packets online. And these would make great, yeah, great stocking stuffers. They're fun. Um, and I keep these by my front door so that if littles come by, I can always give some seeds. And then lastly, this is that wonderful golden fever few. That is golden, golden fever. Seed. Golden <laughs> fever few is hard to find. And um, so this is also kind of highly prized, but it's also highly prolific in making seeds. So there you go. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about where I'm sprinkling some seeds. So let's take a break. Okay, now I'm getting ready to sprinkle my larkspur seeds on Lemon Lane, and I feel like I should be skipping or something as I do this. <laughs> Stuart, watch out for the shovel. Okay, so now notice that I'm just sprinkling, and I don't really, I'm not uh, seasoning, oh, yeah. yes, seasoning the garden with blue. I don't care. I'm not worried about covering up the seeds. I'm not even going to rake over it because, after all, when Mother Nature... Uh, drops her seeds from her larkspur. She's not getting out there and covering up the seeds. So if Mother Nature's not going to do it, I'm not going to do it either. And I fortunately, I have enough seed that I can do this. And the other thing is, is I don't want it to be solid. I don't want it to be really regimented. I just want it to look very freeform and beautiful. And so I'll just kind of scatter them here and there. And these, I didn't even really have to put much sand in there because these aren't quite as fine. This already has some. Now, one thing I will do, you guys, and that is I will make sure to record, because my memory ain't very good, I will make sure to record that I did this. And so Lemon Lane will now be adorned with some spires of larkspur. When the larkspur is finished, I'll let a little bit of it go to seed and dry. But most of it, quite frankly, I will just pull out and put in the composter. So that is my seed scattering method using larkspur, but the same thing applies to different kinds of seeds. It will just be in different locations and in different quantities, depending on how densely you want to plant them. Whether or not you thin them out later is entirely up to you, depending on the effect that you want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't if I'm lazy. So there you go, Stuart. Let's record this in the journal and we'll call it a day. Good. Well, I told Stuart, whenever we film, I always like to have the bathroom blind raised because it's just so much more beautiful. But my son is in there taking a <laughs> bath in the public bathroom. <laughs> And so I guess I won't, um, uh, though it might increase our views, Stuart. I'm not really sure. So it is December 13th, and I am recording in my garden journal. And by the way, you guys, um, if you didn't hear it, you might want to go back and search for it. But I did a, an interview with Mike McGrath on You Bet Your Garden. He was, he's a big fan of the garden cool journal. And it was really, really fun. And you can go back and listen to it. I think it aired on the 9th and you can go back and listen to it. Uh, but also I wanted to mention that, that the, the special white version of the Garden Journal is already sold out. So they're into their second printing. Um, and they're also getting ready to put together a boxed set of my first book, The Elegant and Edible Garden, and the Garden Journal that will be encased in a box. And I think it would be really a really brilliant thing to have and beautiful on your bookshelf and those will both be alike in terms of their covers so the covers will both be the same this is the special the special white edition just like the Beatles white album okay so on December 13th 2023 I am recording that at the high is 58 the low is 44 and I planted five Ambassador 
5 gladiator. And 5, whatever that S one was, that I'm going to have to go back and, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and look, <laughs> allium. And then I also seeded feverfew and larkspur in Lemon Lane. Such a cool thing to do. Now, the other thing is, if you feel like you don't have enough space to write on each date, well, that's, that's where you find that not doing it daily might be your friend. <laughs> because you can, or, or why you don't do it on that day every year, then you just go into another area that you didn't use before and you have more, you know, you have more space for it. The other thing that I like to do is just, I just add special stuff that I tuck in here. I've shown you this before. I have multiple ribbons for different for different things. Uh, but oh look, we had a we had a, a sad butterfly. So I just have tucked those let let that butterfly live in eternity in my garden journal. Um, and then okay this is I, I, I love this planting combo. So I can, I'm keeping it in my journal. Um, and then, of course, my packing list for color blends. Oh, and look here. I can probably reference back. Oh, see? It already helped me by putting this in here because that other oh, you got allium it right was... Go ahead and pronounce it for us. <laughs> <laughs> Stipitatum. Stipitatum. I don't know. <laughs> Stip potato. Stip potato. But I'm I know try. that I planted those. It also helps me to have this in my resources area. I can I can tuck it into you know one of the pockets or I can just slip it in. But that helps me. And then typically I also have a set of my markers that I like to use that will highlight certain things that as I'm flipping through my my garden tome a little bit later that I could readily see. So just wanted to give you a heads up on the garden journal. I do think it would make a great a, a great Christmas gift for someone. I need to straighten need to straighten my my little table here, but I can do that later because I've got just a little bit more seed sprinkling to do. Thank you guys for hanging with me in the garden today. There is still lots to do and look at and appreciate in your December garden.